Ratatouille is Brad Bird's delightful rat-based movie in which Remy the Rat, who is genetically predisposed to being a great chef, becomes said chef through follicular manipulation of Linguini. He helps Linguini and Colette fall in love and foils the plans of celebrity wage thief George Columbaris by uncovering Linguini's legitimate inheritance of Gusteau's restaurant. The Rat Clan tie up Big Joel, and finally, Remy makes a vampire reminisce about his childhood through a delicious ratatouille dish. People who understand very basic things about media claim that movies that use non-human characters can still be human stories. Unfortunately, I know writers who use subtext and they're all cowards. And the rats in Ratatouille raise a lot of questions. What actually are the rats? Why can they cook? Why are their fingers weird fleshy nubbins? How are they able to stand on these very hot pots? If they act like humans, are they literally people? Possibly. Male albino rat. What do you think is the reason for the difference in their behavior? What we're almost certainly looking at is an example of both convergent and divergent evolution. But determining in which way is a bit tricky. The rats are either relatives of rats converging with humans, or relatives of humans converging with rats. A discerning viewer here might be thinking, but Lars Placena? Surely it would be Homo Norwegicus. After all, Remy and Emil claim to be brown rats in the short Your Friend a Rat, where they discuss migration of first black rats and then brown rats into Europe. Perhaps they're delusional, because when we look at the data presented to us, we mostly see characteristics of black rats. The larger ears and eyes, and more pointed noses. On the other hand, the tail length is more dubious. In some shots, the tail appears shorter than the body, like that of a brown rat, while in others, their tails might be longer than their bodies, like that of a black rat. Brown rats are extremely populous in Europe, particularly in urban areas, while black rats are rare, but found in the countryside. Which is exactly where Remy and his family originally come from. So they're almost certainly black rats. I think that makes you, the discerning viewer who objected, a fool. Now we can get back to the science. Still, actually determining the evolutionary lineage here will require a careful examination of the evidence. So what do we know? The rats have human intelligence. They look like rats, but with gummy fingers. They are immune, or at least resistant, to heat. These traits evolved over an extraordinarily short time span. Evolution is an interesting balancing act in many ways. Mutations create new genetic diversity, while selection and drift remove genetic diversity. Unfortunately for us, a limitation is that we don't know if there's any selection occurring, or what the mutation rate is. Some further limitations we have in determining the evolutionary lineage is that we don't know all the genes involved in rat with small human brain, or human with rat body and we can't sequence either the people or the rats in Ratatouille because they're all Lysenkoists. Now the only scientific avenue left to us is to take an educated guess. After being put in an unfamiliar environment, both animals are active. But the hungry animal is somewhat more active. Firstly, the reason I brought up the rate of evolution is because Evolution is a slow, continuous process, and neither humans nor black rats have really been around Europe for all that long. So we need to decide if it's easier to humanize a rat or ratanize a human. For the purposes of this, we can think of it simply as, is a human brain more different to a rat brain than a human body is more different to a rat body? And do we actually have any evidence for the humanity or ratanity of Remy and his tribe? Well, let's talk about that rat bod. Most people are sort of aware that across a lot of vertebrates, and between all mammals in particular, there is great similarity in the overall body plan, even if superficially some animals might look very different from others. The major skeletal differences between humans and rats are mostly in the head shape, accounting for relative brain size and how important smell is, 
and they've also got a tail. Another difference is in the complexity of the old sniffer. But there isn't really anything completely novel in the rat olfactory system that isn't a variation on the same theme as found in humans. It's just a more important and more sensitive version with developed septal organs that are lacking in primates. One telling feature, however, is that rats are obligate nose breathers, whereas us humans are capable of the original sin. <gasps> mouth breathing. <laughs> For which the rats in Ratatouille are also damned. No breathing! In addition to this mouth breathing, the rats in Ratatouille are not great swimmers, requiring boats. While real life rats are fantastic swimmers very comfortable in water. Further, rodent teeth are horrific, with incisors at the front and molars set much further back in a very troubling manner. Remy does not have this tooth structure. Instead, rat teeth in the movie are more like human teeth with oversized central incisors. There is no evidence for or against the presence of a Hardirian gland in the rats. So while the eyes might be the windows to the soul, they're not the windows to determining the evolutionary lineage of the rats in Ratatouille. Similarly, no shallow facial dissection is shown in the movie to indicate the presence or absence of a Zimbel's gland. And in a shocking blow to the furries and our scientists, we are not shown the number of mammary glands present on the rats in the movie, meaning another yeah. characteristic feature is obscured from our research. Finally, we can look at hair, and we see the first bit of evidence that these rats are relatives of actual rats. Ignoring that they look like rats. The presence of whiskers! So we've only got whiskers as evidence to explicitly suggest divergence from rats, and the teeth, respiratory system, and ability to talk seems to suggest a hominid ancestry, with all other ratish features being only superficially different from humans. What responses do you think the other rat is making? The satiated rat is inactive. But even if he had hit the bar and got a pellet, food would not be a reward without the drive of hunger. Now to the brain. We can compare a human brain on the left with a rat brain on the right. Now I hear what you're saying. Lars Persena, there's absolutely no difference between these two brains. And you're wrong. The cerebellum is larger in rats by relative proportion of total brain volume. Nevertheless, you say, we all know rodents are incredibly valuable model organisms for principles and also human disease, due in part to genetic and functional similarities across all life, but in particular among mammals. This time you're almost completely correct. The only problem is the pesky brain, of course, where we find conserved basic cell types but considerable differences in proportions of those cell types and structural variation. The biggest problem being our huge dummy thick cortex, where the thinking and some perceiving happens. This oversized chunk of brain is one structural reason why rodents aren't perfect for brain research. One possible piece of evidence for why our cortex is so ungainly is how cell differentiation occurs in our brains compared to many other mammals. Now we'll learn an embarrassingly basic version of cortical development. This will sort of become relevant in a little bit. Good morning, I'm Dr. Bones. Welcome to Rat 101. My textbook is required reading for this class and presentation of a receipt is a hurdle requirement. But today we're going to have a very basic introduction into cortical development. It will lack detail and you're not allowed to ask questions. Now cortical development occurs through a series of cellular divisions occurring across radially laminar zones from the ventricular surface to the peel surface of the developing brain. This follows the classic developmental process of progenitor cells becoming increasingly differentiated with increasingly specific function. This involves the ventricular zone, the subventricular zone, the intermediate zone, and the cortical plate. In humans, one important aspect is the additional subdivision of the subventricular zone into inner and outer subventricular zones. Now this is a video about Ratatouille, so don't worry too much about the specifics, but these different zones allow for greater specification of the type of cell divisions occurring. And the temporal specificity of cell differentiation 
balancing with proliferation is one feature that contributes to overall cortical volume. So is this a feature that would need to evolve in rats to have humanized brains? Yeah, sure, maybe? But if that's all it is, then ferrets are pretty much rats with people brains. So why bring any of this up? Well, I'm of the opinion that it might be easier to go from big smart human brain to small rat-sized smart human brain than it is to go from small dumb rat brain to small smart human brain. And there isn't any actual evidence to support this. And of course this comes to the problem. Rats are very small. Watch him go around the side of the bar again. This response gradually wins out because it is rewarded the fastest and with the least effort. Now a classic human brain thing is that our brains are quite big. Not as special as we sometimes think they are, but still very impressive. This provides the issue of human cognitive capacity being produced by a tiny rat-sized brain. A rare congenital disease called microcephaly might provide some answers, if we're being very fast and loose with reality. And it could connect us back to cortical development if we're paying attention. Microcephaly is characterized by a small brain, with a significant reduction in cortical volume. Individuals with microcephaly tend to be intellectually disabled, but many individuals have completely typical cognition. Microcephaly can be caused by a number of environmental factors, most famously the Zika virus during the Olympics in Rio, but can also be caused by many mutations. The most common gene to be involved is abnormal spindle-like microcephaly associated or ASPM. What on earth am I talking about? Well, if you know your cortical development to a much greater degree than what Dr. Bones explained, and are thoroughly on top of your cellular biology, the word spindle in ASPM might have clued you in on the connection here. The primary progenitor pool of cells in cortical development is maintained and expanded through symmetrical divisions that require association with the ventricular surface, mediated by the apical polarity complex in conjunction with the centrosome. Bingo, bango, bongo, bish, bash, bosh. <coughs> If you lose these symmetrical divisions, you reduce the overall cell population, because the cells undergo differentiation sooner. What I'm saying is, the human brain can be much smaller without reducing cognitive capacity in some cases, and there is a known mechanism through which this can be achieved. But now you're probably whinging about the difference between a couple standard deviations and a many hundredfold reduction, and I hear you, but we'll ignore you. Now that that is incredibly clear and not densely jargon-filled and esoteric, we can say that based on the human-like features of the otherwise rat-like body, plus the human brain, the so-called rats in Ratatouille are evolutionarily divergent from humans and can thus be named Homo ratus. While we're riding that scientific high, we may have forgotten something that raises some issues. Linguini is controlled through some clumps of hair. This is not a human feature. Perhaps this world contains no humans whatsoever. Thankfully this can be dismissed as we all know that Linguini is actually a mech. However, we've now got the problem of how the rats can stand on pots while they're being used for cooking. Perhaps some bizarre foot localized ton state, but that doesn't make sense. The fingers look way too gummy and it's also dumb. Another alternative is that somehow there's been a horizontal transposition event bringing a thermophilic gene from Alvanella pompeiana into the Homo ratus genome. And these rats' feet function like the polychaete's tail, and can therefore survive transient extreme temperatures. There are piles of data that suggest this, they're just hidden off screen. Rat is not a dog. Rat. <laughs>